Welcome back everybody to another video here on Chemo 365 where I hope out of the 365 days out of the year you can find a video here that you can relate to. Tonight we're having a closer look at a play that tells the life story of one of the music world's first female crossover artists, Gloria Estefan in On Your Feet Get Up and Make It Happen And as always guys, if you want to help support the channel, the best way to do that is to hit that subscribe button down at the bottom, leave as many comments as you want, and if you really like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That's the best way to let YouTube know somebody's watching. So Gloria Estefan, she was a part of my childhood growing up. I'm sure I did some of the slow dancing, no, I don't wanna live, you know, in the gym, and the words got in the way. All of those songs, part of my life, MTV. 80s, 90s, when music used to be music. Now, I don't know what's happening nowadays, but what a remarkable story this play tells you from when she was a child all the way up to the accident and then re-emerging out of the accident. Fantastic story. You think about it, back then, crossover artists, very difficult. Female, Cuban descent, getting a foothold, number one, in the Latin music world, and then finally being able to cross over to the English pop world. It's an amazing story. And not to be forgotten, because I didn't realize this, but when you look on this thing right here, that says the Emilio and Gloria Estefan play, movie, whatever it says over there, Broadway musical thing. And their relationship is one of the few in Hollywood, in the music industry that has lasted, just like Celine Dion's, unfortunately, recently, her husband recently passed away. Um, but what another great story between those two, and it's told beautifully in this play. So here's a quick synopsis so you know what to expect when you come see the play. So basically, it starts off with a flashback scene back when she was a child back over in Cuba. And she gets a little bit older, gets more talented in singing. Then they cross over to Miami where she meets Emilio. That's a funny scene because he's wearing these super short, like corduroy shorts. And her grandma's like, damn, look at that. Uh, but they get closer. She auditions for the band, ends up becoming the lead singer. They get famous. The relationship between her mom and her gets strained because I think the mom was a little bit jealous that she actually made it in the music industry. Uh, then it rolls on eventually into them struggling to cross over from the Latin market into the American market and then her accident and then her rise out of the accident. So there's a quick synopsis and now you know what to expect when watching the play. So if I had to sum up this play in one word, it would be colorful. There is so much color and energy coming out of this, especially when the dance numbers come on. You've never seen so much Latin dancing. It's absolutely crazy how intense these scenes are and you can't help but want to get up and dance. In fact, down in the pit area on the floor, there were some people that actually got up and started going crazy, which is not normal in the theater, right? You don't see that in a theatrical production, but it was good to see all those things. So very colorful, very energetic. All of the dance scenes were crazy good, but it did suffer some downfalls. So my biggest criticism of On Your Feet is lack of storytelling. So check it out. If I can look anything up on the internet and get the information and you put that as a play, you're not doing me anything. You basically are turning me into the kids sitting in a classroom watching a video and learning by watching a video. You're not giving me more than what I could have done on my own. You need to have good storytelling to get that good character development so the people that are watching you on stage buy in to what's happening and caring about to the characters on stage. It's not enough to have good actors, good music, good dancing, great humongous dancing scenes, by the way. It's not enough. If the overall synergy of what you're giving me is exactly the same as the information as I could have got off the internet, it's not enough. Nobody's gonna get into the play, and that's kind of what happened here. There's not enough good storytelling. So how do you fix something like that? Well, a big part of what I seen was the over-reliance on a projector. They projected a lot of images on stage, and to me, that's just force-feeding information to the audience that could have been conveyed in a different way. Another thing you can do is to give more insight into what the characters are thinking internally instead of just moving the action along by saying, hey, look, we got to go to the theater or we got to go to the disc jockeys to play our music. Okay, now we got to go over here and play these type of venues so that we can show we can cross over. That is just force-feeding information. 
You got to let those things develop internally in the character's mind and have it come out on stage in order for there to be proper character development. So for those things, and I, I don't have a problem with the usage of projectors like the, the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime, totally digital, but that was to display what it might look like in the mind of an autistic child. That was part of its stick. But here, the over-reliance and lack of internal thoughts in characters' minds really, really affected the play's overall ability to show and give really good storytelling. So one of the great things about waiting a few weeks before posting a review is you can really try to remember and see what comes back first because those are the things that had the most impact on you. Just like I said before, the music, the lighting, how colorful everything was, the costuming, the dancing, the singing, all of that, I guarantee you when you watch this play, that's the first thing you're going to remember. Now secondly, the thing that I try to bring back is the characters. Who are the characters that resonated in me the most? Who can I remember the best the most? And here they are in order. Number one, Emilio. Number two, the grandmother. Number three, the mom. And weirdly enough, lastly, is Gloria Estefan's character. And when I thought back to it, yeah, she had the most time on stage and she sang the most and she danced the most probably out of all the major characters. I just couldn't remember any specific line that she said that moved me. When you compare it to Emilio's character, when you compare it to her grandmother and her mother, they just have better lines. I don't know what it is. Now, Emilio's character or role in the play outshines everybody. And I don't know if that's how the play was supposed to be written to show and demonstrate how important of a role he had in developing the Miami Sound Machine, Gloria Estefan, and the marketing. If that was the goal, it was well done because his comedic timing, his dramatic timing, his stage presence, it just outshines everybody, but very closely, oddly enough, to the grandmother's character who destroys her comedic timing and who's not even on stage as nearly as much as everybody else, but is much more rememberable and pushes the action a lot more than anybody else. So when you're watching the play, if you're wondering, oh, how come I can't remember much about Gloria Estefan other than her singing, which is fantastic, um, maybe it was written that way. So what's the bottom line here? Should I go see this play? Yes. My thing is, I want her story to be as good as Jersey Boys, to be as good as the Carol King story. I want it to get to that level. But it just seems it's lacking those things to get it to that next level. You're still going to get all of those great moments. And you're kind of struggling. You want to know when that next big number is coming. And it shouldn't be that way. You should be more reliant on hearing the story and then the music being secondary and the dancing and everything else being third. Um, but is it the price of admission? Yeah, you're going to get a lot of great entertainment. And maybe you might learn some things along the way about Gloria Estefan and Emilio Estefan as well. But guys, that's the ending of this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to Chemo365, please do. If you liked the video, please give me the thumbs up. And as always, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you.